Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we've been spending a bit of time talking about power, AC power, you know, true power, reactive power, apparent power, and power factor, and how to calculate all that. And now we're going to be talking about power factor correction. But before we, you know, do this question, which is, by the way, coming from Unit 5, Handout 5, it's number 4 in that question. Um, before we do this circuit, though, we need to talk about why we even bother with power factor correction. And so power factor correction, basically, guys, is adding a capacitor 99% of the time in parallel with loads in order to reduce the power factor. Because if you recall from when we were doing power, there is true power and reactive power, and then there's the VA. And the VA is the total, you know, the total power that the circuit's using. It's the sum of the two powers. But recall that your kilowatt hour meter measures true power and reactive power is ignored by the uh, kilowatt hour meter. And, you know, that's really annoying to the supply authority, if you will. You know, Hydro One sending you all this power and you're only paying for part of it. Now, if you're a residential customer, you know, you're small, a small fish and they don't bother with you at all. You know, if your power factor isn't perfect, they don't care. They just charge you for your true power and they're done with you. And if you're a residential customer, your load is prop your power factor is probably good, reasonably good anyway, because most of your loads are you know going to be lighting and resistive loads, um, you know, hot water heater, uh, dishwasher, uh, you know, dryer, things like that, all big resistors for the most part. And you don't have very many inductive loads. You know, you got a furnace motor and a few other small inductive loads. So they just don't bother with you. But if you're a commercial or an industrial customer who's got like a whole building full of motors running, uh, they'd be very concerned about your power factor because, you know, your most of your loads are heavy inductive loads. And that means they've just got a lot of reactive power going on. And uh, they've got to supply all that current to you, basically, that, that nobody's paying for. And that... That annoys them. So what they do is they continue to charge those customers for the true power only, but then they also monitor the customer's power factor. And if the power factor is worse than 90% or 0.9, they actually tack in an additional charge onto the bill, which is a penalty for having poor power factor. And the extra charge on the bill is sufficiently high that it would encourage that customer to add some capacitors to his system in order to improve his power factor to at least 90% so that he doesn't get this extra charge every month. The extra charge is like is 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 a lot of money and it makes it worth, you know, adding power factor correction capacitors. So, when we do power factor correction, guys, we're going to be taking, you know, inductive loads and adding capacitor to them in parallel in order to improve their power factor either to unity which means it's the power factor is one and the phase angle is zero or we're going to and or we're going to correct loads to 90 percent okay so those are the two power factor correction type questions we're going to have and we're going to start with you know correcting a circuit to unity and maybe in the near future, we'll learn about correcting the power factor to 90% as well. Okay, not maybe, for sure, we're going to do that, okay? So we're going to start with Unity. And the good news is, to correct the power factor to Unity, you already pretty much know how to do it. Uh, I'll show you with this question here. But, uh, you know, it's not it's no harder than what we've been doing so far, really. Okay, guys? So let's take a look at this one here. It says... A 250 volt, 60 hertz AC motor draws a current of 32 amps and it has a power factor of 0.65. And we're going to calculate the size of the capacitor used to correct the power factor to unity. Okay, so we're going to see if we can correct this thing to unity. In other words, make the phase angle zero degrees. And then here it says, what is the value of line current after, you know, after it's been corrected to unity? Now, before we correct this, let's take a look at this motor here. And I've drawn it here, 250 volts, 32 amps. Here's the motor. This is before correction. It's just sitting there running. It's an, pretty much an RL series circuit, guys. And in order to correct this thing, what we're going to do is connect 
a capacitor out here in parallel with the load and try to you know take care of the inductive reactants in this uh, circuit with a capacitor basically and uh, the capacitor for power factor correction is always going to be connected in parallel with loads and that's because you know you could put it in series but the problem with that is if you put the capacitor in series it's going to drop a certain amount of voltage and uh, that means you know you won't get the whole 250 volts to the motor and uh, so that's not going to work if we connect it out here in parallel, then the motor will still get 250 volts because we know that parallel circuits all get the same voltage, right? So this thing is going to be connected in parallel, you know, 99% of the time and 100% of the time in school for when we're, uh, you know, making these calculations. Always connected out here in parallel. Now, how are we going to solve this problem? Well, every single power factor correction question starts the same way. And the way it starts is you need to draw a phasor diagram for this circuit before correction. Okay, it's going to be the uncorrected power phasor diagram. It is going to be exactly the way we've been calculating, you know, power, VA, and VARs, and power factor the last couple of days. And so what I'm going to do here is draw a uncorrected power phasor diagram for this thing. Okay, and it's always going to start this way. You know, what does the power phasers look like for this motor, you know, before we've added this capacitor? And so it's going to look like this, guys, you know, just like every power phasor diagram. It's going to look like this. Power is going to be there, true power. VA there. VAR is here. And we're going to put the power factor in here. And we know that's 0.65 because this question happens to know, you know, it's this is a nice one, guys, because it gives you the voltage, voltage and current and the power factor. So... There's your power factor. Uh, we're going to calculate the VA next, guys. And uh, I've given you a voltage and a current, so you can just multiply them together to get the VA. And by the way, if this circuit was, you know, if I didn't give you the voltage and the current and the power factor, and all I gave you was a diagram of a circuit with, you know, some resistors and inductors in there, you know, you it's just like the other stuff we've been doing. You would have to then calculate the current and the power factor because what you need is to get this power phasor diagram for that particular circuit okay guys so same as what we've been doing this one's easy the va is going to be 30 times 250 times 32 okay guys so 250 times 32 anytime i give you the voltage and current you should multiply them together and they will be equal to the va 250 times 32 looks like the VA for this particular guy before we've touched it with a capacitor is this and I'm going to quietly calculate my power okay Okay, so what I've done here, guys, is drawn a power phasor diagram that represents this motor. Before we've added a capacitor, it is the uncorrected power phasor diagram, guys. And here it is. We've figured out that its VA is 8,000. Its true power is 5,200. And uh, its VARS is 6,079 VARS, okay? And really what this is is VARS XL, guys, because this is an RL series circuit so this vars that we've calculated is the reactive power in this motor because it's a big inductor guys and so let's look up here and see if we can answer this question calculate the size of the capacitor used to correct the power factor to unity and so what we're trying to do is get this down to unity and it's unity the phase angle is zero degrees so if i were to draw a corrected guys power phasor diagram it would look like this the first thing is 
There is never anything we can do about the true power. It will always be there. It is the resistor in this circuit, and I could add capacitors for a month if I wanted to. There is no way I'm going to ever do anything about the you know resistance of this circuit. So this 5200 watts is going to be there no matter what. Okay, and so it's going to be the first phaser that I draw. Now the other thing that's still going to be there is this reactive power here. That is the inductor in this motor, guys, and it is still there. It is, you know, really it's VARS XL. So I'm gonna label it as VARS XL. Okay, it's gonna be 6079 VARS. Now the question is, how do I take care of all that with a capacitor? And the answer is, let's just make our capacitor equal to that. Okay, so this guy here, is going to be the capacitor. In other words, it's going to be VARS XC. And if I want to take care of this entire inductor with a capacitor, I need to make sure my capacitor is 6079 VARS. Okay? Now, there's one more phaser we've got to draw here, and that is the VA. And the VA is the sum of the three, guys. You know, here the VA was the sum of the two. Here the VA is going to be the sum of the three phasers, and so the VA is going to sit right here, okay? It's going to be sitting right there, and I don't know if you know this, but it's going to be equal to 5200 volt amps after correction, all right guys? And look, the phase angle between the power and the VA is now zero degrees. So we have corrected this circuit to unity. We've made the phase angle zero. We've made the power factor one. And we did it by adding this capacitor, which is equal to 6079 bars. All right, so the answer to this question here is, uh, you know, the capacitor is going to be equal to 6079 bars. And by the way, when you're correcting to unity, guys, the capacitor that you're going to add is always going to be equal to the VARs that you calculated in the uncorrected power phaser diagram, all right? Because we're trying to get rid of all this reactive power with a capacitor. So it'll always be equal to, you know, the, the uncorrected power phaser. Sorry, the uncorrected VARs. All right, and after correction, this is what the phasers are going to look like. You're going to still have all your true power. You're going to still have all your reactive power due to the inductor, but you're adding, you know, a bunch of reactive power with a capacitor, and you're making the phase angle zero, and you're making the VA equal to the true power. Now, let's calculate B for a second. What is the value of the line current at unity power factor? Well, we know that line current is going to be the total current. And so I'm going to calculate it using the VA formula. We know it's E line, oops, E total times I total, which means I total is equal to E total, oops, equals to VA over E total, okay? So in order to calculate the current after we've corrected it, it's going to be the VA after correction divided by the voltage of the circuit, guys that voltage right there, and look, the VA after correction is 5200. All right, guys, so it's going to be 5200 volt amps, and the voltage is still 250, okay? So let's try that. 5200 divided by 250 volts. It's 20.8 amps. All right. Now notice something here, guys. This machine was drawing 32 amps before we corrected it. Now it is drawing 20.8 amps. All right. And this is exactly how it will work, guys. If I put a capacitor to correct a machine that has a big inductor in it, it does two things, guys. It corrects the phase angle. So this thing had a current that was lagging by a whole bunch. I don't know how much. We could easily figure it out. Now this entire circuit is running. It is in phase. The voltage and the current are in phase, guys. And not only that, but my current went down to 20.8 amps. All right? And now we've made Hydro One happy, Bruce Nuclear happy, you know, Niagara Falls happy, because 
they don't have to deliver 32 amps to us anymore. They only have to deliver 20.8 amps to us. And that whole 20.8 amps is nicely in phase with the voltage. All right, so that is power factor correction, guys. And uh, stick around for the next video because I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, so tune in in a second, okay, guys?